Welcome to The Shed. My name is Jamie and as an irrelevant human, I get to spend my time alone in here. Anyway, are you looking for a full featured wide angle lens that can be used for a variety of applications, not just photography, but also video? Well, perhaps the Lauer 15mm F20D is the lens for you? I don't know, we'll find out. This is an ultra wide, fast, full frame manual focus prime lens with a 15 mil focal length, which equals, you know, 110 degrees field of view, because that's the important part to know the degrees of view. But it's also interesting because it's more than 90. So it's quite wide, isn't it? But anyway, it has a fast maxed, maxed, max aperture of f2 and is available in not just Sony E-mount, but Nikon Z, Canon RF, and if you really want it, like L-mount. It has a close focusing distance of 15 centimeters, a D-click switch for the aperture, and a 72 millimeter filter thread. The big USP here is it claims to be zero distortion. Weighs 500 grams, comes with a five-year warranty, and is priced at 899 pounds or 999 euro, or in dollars, I don't know, I, I'm afraid you'll have to look that one up. Sorry about that. Now, looking at the exterior, the look and feel of this beautiful lens, the body, while it's an all metal construction in that classic color of a lens, black, Henry Ford would be proud. Built really well, combined with the texture, the weight, and that solidness that, you know, metal gives you. You have a lens that forces confidence when you hold it, unlike a lot of the cheaper plastic lenses out there. Now you've got some lovely aperture markings and focus distance markings that stand out nice and clear with meters in white and feet in red. The focus and aperture rings have a lovely smooth, there we go, lovely and smooth, firm twist to them that really helps you quickly and confidently find the sweet spot, which just makes things that much easier. Now, the D-click button. Yeah, that has a nice definitive click on it as you move it on and off. And it's easy to find because of the nice contrasting silver color of the button there. Now, when you are in click mode, the aperture ring has nice definitive clicks to it. So we can hear and you can easily feel them, they're nicely audible, they're not too loud, they're not too quiet, they're just, you know, perfect. The position of the focus ring, well that just feels very natural in the hand, when on the camera in particular, and you combine that with the nice smooth rotation, it just makes it very nice to use. Also the aperture ring and the D-click button are nicely positioned when you're using them on the camera. You don't need to stretch your fingers in a weird way, and just feels intuitive, natural to use. And in fact, when it's on the camera and using it, you quickly feel at home with it, and the balance of it being on the camera is nice. It just makes you want to take pictures, which, you know, why would you have a lens like this if you didn't want to take pictures? So it, it makes you want to do them more than normal. That's all I have to say on that matter. Now, as I mentioned earlier, 15 mil is a field of view of about 110 degrees. Well, let's compare that. The Sony Zeiss 18 mil is 90 degrees. The Sony 24 f 1.4, which is this lens I'm using here, that has a field of group, field of group, field of view of 84 degrees. So 110 degrees field of view is nicely wide, like very wide, and you're going to get so much in that image. We mentioned max aperture of f2. Well, this allows in ooh, a lot of light and it makes it fantastic for astrophotography in particular. Now, for those that have heard of Ian Norman, aka Lonely Spec, he's created a tool for scoring the light capturing ability of different lenses. So this has a lens rating score of 1,947 on the Astro Lens Rating System, which really, for that wide of an angle, is a heavyweight score. Now, for more information, I will link it down in the description. And uh, yeah, go check it out. Very interesting, especially if you're into astrophotography. It's not only just good for astrophotography, having that wide aperture, it allows greater flexibility, faster shutter speeds, 
lower ISOs. And even though it's a wide aperture, it's not one that lends itself to creating much in the way of, you know, that separation of uh, focus and out of focus areas, unless you're getting kind of real close up to it. Talking about getting close up, that close focusing distance of 15 centimeters. Now you need to keep in mind that this is with it mounted to the camera from the sensor and this is taking up 10 centimeters of that so you can get five centimeters near an object with a max magnification of one to four now ideally for macro you want a lens with a one to one ratio so perhaps that is an area where the lens doesn't excel in but you know it's still pretty good but one thing to keep in mind is particularly because it is a manual focus lens by adding macro extension tubes you can get super close in fact i got so close i was literally touching the object with the lens and it being in focus which is pretty incredible stuff right you videographers out there the clickless aperture button that is a fantastic function i'm sure you agree and instead of sudden jumps in exposure when you're clicking through the aperture wheel there you get lovely smooth transitions between the apertures which is gonna make video in so much easier and you know make you look super pro throw in that smooth consistent accurate focus and aperture rings it is gonna be a really nice lens for videographers to use perhaps an area that a lot of lenses fall down for video is with focus breathing but you'll be glad to hear that there is very minimal focus breathing adding to its strengths for video work in particular. On the front here, we have a very standard issue size filter thread of 72 millimeters, which is really gonna help when it comes to the ability to use filters on the front. But that's not the only factor to whether filters can be used. Unlike a lot of wide angle lenses, the front element here is really not that bulbous. This means that you can easily attach, you know, standard filters on the front, no problem. And I really can't emphasize enough how useful that fact is of putting just normal filters on the front it's a game changer honestly finally the zero d aka zero distortion aka a rectilinear lens now this is a big feature for such a wide angle lens now as a rule of thumb the wider you get the more your lens is going to suffer from distortion now this isn't the end of the world because most people can correct it in post but for specific needs Again, this is a game changer. For example, my workflow, which involves using Capture One as my main photo editing tool. One of its downfalls is it is missing a lot of correction profiles for lenses, which means manually having to adjust them. But with this lens, I don't have to worry about that. Because this lens doesn't have any crazy distortion, it's extremely minimal, in, you know, as close as zero to possible, I don't have to worry about that. And for video two, this can make post-production a lot easier, ultimately be a real time saver, which is an important part of lens choice or equipment choice. Is it gonna save me time and therefore money in the long run? And it's worth paying an extra bit of penny now to save it in the long run, which is what part of my thinking was anyway. I digress. Overall, quality of the image is great. After using it for many years, I've got the Sony a7R 3 which is a 42 megapixel camera, and I've never been disappointed by the pictures I've got from it. It's nice and sharp, wide open, with only a bit of slight softness around the corners, and then when you stop it down slightly, it becomes nice and sharp throughout the whole image. Regarding coma and chromatic aberrations, there is a little bit, but that starts to disappear when you stop down to f2.8. Also, that dreaded thing, the vignetting, well, there's a little bit, but really it's not a big deal because that can easily be sorted in post with a quick, you know, swizzle of a slider. Bokeh on a wide lens, is that something that is possible? Well, yes. And on this lens, it's very pleasant, it's very smooth. That transition from focus to out of focus is very pleasing to the eyes. Yeah, I really like that bokeh, bokeh, be beaker. I like the beakers, but also like the bokehs. So ultimately, a great image quality from this lens that really rivals any other ultra-wide angle lens out there. Now, what about cons? There has to be some bad points, Jamie. Well, yeah, that's one or two. For me, this wasn't a deal breaker, but for others, you yeah, know, it could be. And that is the fact that there is no autofocus. Also, another issue is the lack of XF data due to there being no like 
electronic connections or chip in the thing. Now for me this isn't a deal breaker but it is kind of one of them a little annoying things when you've got a whole load of raw files and you're not sure what focal length it was shot at or what aperture was used and sometimes that's kind of useful to know but on the whole with landscape photography it's not really something that I'm that fussed by. Now who's this for? This lens has such great flexibility when it comes to those who can use it from landscape to astro, videographers to architecture. It's a great lens for a lot of people because of this variety of features that's why I bought this lens. I wanted something that I could use for landscapes, for astro. And then also if work came along such as shooting interiors, you know, architecture, perhaps some video work. I was at a wedding just really in a tight space. I could pull out this little bad boy, put that on, get it done. It's so flexible. This isn't the only wide angle lens out there. Yes, believe me, there are more. But one thing you do have to keep in mind, especially with wide angle lenses, is you're gonna have some kind of compromise. So you need to really think about what you really want to use it for and be happy to compromise with certain other features that your lens wouldn't have. For example, I prioritize being able to have a wide aperture, being able to put filters on the front, especially without the need for a special filter adapter. But I did compromise on the autofocus and the XF data. So that was something I had to think about and decided they were worthwhile compromises. If you want a really comprehensive list of especially Sony E-mount lenses, uh, there's one which I'll link below in the description by Alec Griffin, so thanks for putting that together. Super useful information. Have a look through that list, see what other options there are for you, but here's a few picks that I thought might interest you depending what your priorities are. For something that's just as wide angle, if not a bit more, has an even wider aperture then you've got the new Sony 40mm f1.8 or you've got the Sigma 40mm f1.8. Both got autofocus as well, which is, you know, a, a big bonus. But they're going to set you back a prettier penny than the Lauer 15mm. So that's, that's your compromise. If you're looking for something that's of a similar price or perhaps cheaper, but has autofocus, you've got the Samyang 40mm f2.8 or you've got the Tamron 17 through to 28 f 2.8. What if you're looking for something cheaper and you don't mind it being manual focus? Well Nissi have just brought out a new 15mm lens f4 and that's designed particularly to really accentuate sun stars. Also another choice is the IRX 15mm f 2.4 which comes in two options. You've got a cheaper plastic body or a more expensive metal option. So there, are, there's a lot of options out there for you when it, on the Sony E-mount now when it comes to wide angle lenses. So you need to really think what your priorities are with a wide angle lens. Of course, you know, there's more options than them, but they're ones that I kind of picked out. But have a good look around, look through that list, Google, YouTube, watch our reviews of other lenses before you put down that hard earned money on anything. Perhaps an option to try before you buy is to hire a few different lenses from your local higher camera lens store place. Yeah, that, that's what I meant. So let's put all this information together. Let's summarize it for you. It's a really nicely well-rounded workhorse that will accommodate many different types of photo and video work. Price might sound a bit steep compared to other options, but I feel this is, you know, great value lens because of its flexibility. So if you're after a lens that can do pretty much everything, this potentially could be the one for you. Thanks for watching and a reminder, please do not subscribe. Do not like this video because I need as few as people to see this as possible. And if you're gonna put comments, please just negative comments only below. We'd really appreciate this here in the shed. So I'm now gonna sign out from the shed and go back to being alone. Ciao for now.